Today what we're going to be doing is working on these. These are the roof rafters for the upstairs. What I'm going to do today is cut all the angles for the top and the bottom of the rafter and then get them separated out. And then I have a double, or not the double top plate, but I have the beveled top plates that I'm also going to put on and lay out where the rafters are going to go. And if we get through all of that today, we might actually put rafters on, but I'm not sure about that. We're going to lay them out just like they're going to be. So this is going to be the bottom side. The other side's going to be the top. Our 12 degree angle. There's our line. There's our line. Be real careful with this line. interesting you can see the joint where the two pieces of OSB they used for the center meet. If you haven't seen the first video that we put out about framing a roof with iJoyce. We're doing this roof almost exactly the same. Actually, it is exactly the same with one small change. We're still laying out our rafters at 19.2 inches on center. We still have beveled top plates instead of any brackets or cutting bird's mouths in them, which just makes it easier. Got it? Okay. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly where it goes. So we should be lined up as far as up and down goes. So it's just lining it back up on its mark. So we're gonna make sure we're 19 inches, which we're way over. There's our 19. Oh god, too far. Mayday. When I was cutting the angles on the eye joist, I took care to make sure the length of every joist was exactly the same. And then once we got them up onto the roof, I just held a tape measure at the top while Chelsea had held a tape measure at the bottom. And we figured out what length overhang we would have to get the exact same overhang on the front and the back, which is how we came up with that 19 inch overhang. Unlike putting up the roof on the first floor, the second floor was a little easier just because we have that loft over the bathroom and the closet. So putting up the rafters and installing them on that 12 foot high wall was a lot easier because it was basically right in front of you at working height. So half of a 45. And then again, instead of using like a Simpson hurricane tie because of the problem with all the nail holes not being able to be filled, we just use structural screws as our hold downs. Okay guys, we got a lot done today, but on a serious note, uh, we've only had, what, a couple injuries out here working between the two of us? But we did have a fatality today. Um, it's really heartbreaking. Chelsea's all broken up about it. But our flamingo got ran over. He's <laughs> mourning oh, the loss no. of, his, of his brethren. <laughs> Look at the shock on his face.
We just cut all of the rafters that are going to overhang the east side. These are going to come off perpendicular to the rafters we already set. We cut these so that they would have the same 19 inch overhang as the front and the back. That way it looked the same all the way around. When I hung the joist hangers for our perpendicular rafters for that overhang off of our main rafter, I used a scrap piece of eye joist to make sure that the top flange of the eye joist would be squeezed in tight by that joist hanger. According to the manufacturer, we don't need backer blocks behind the joist hangers because our load isn't great enough. However, I'm putting them there just because I think it looks a little better. Also, I'm not using deck screws instead of nails in the bracket. Those screws are just holding the bracket against the backer block and they go into nail holes that we do not have to use. So they're just extra. You okay, little guy? Oh, well, we broke the camera lens. And no zoomy. No zoomy zoomy. If I pull out. Oh, yeah, no, nah, it's zoomy. <laughs> now it's all blurry. Now? Yeah, I'm recording. Oh, that's sweet. How do I get it back in? How, where's the scatter? Let's get a little. Oh, everybody, stand by until we get the camera. Yeah, literally. No, we don't need to stand by until you get the camera. I just need to get this back in the... No, see, I did it. No, no. Well, we're apparently just going to be that zoomed in always. We once again had to block in between all of the eye joists. That way they resist lateral forces of tipping over when they're sheathing on them. And then just to point out, the spaces you can see between the web and the block will be filled. I'm not sure how I'm going to fill those yet, but we're going to end up spray foaming. So I'm either going to put a little foam in there to fill it before we spray foam or do something to fill that gap. I didn't show us building the corner or framing out the corner on the top of it because we didn't quite have it down yet but this last corner we had down great so we're coming out with versa strand which is a laminated strand lumber at a 45 degree angle and we're using those two two by sixes that are nailed to the rafters so we know exactly where our corner is going to meet out there with the sheathing and then off of that 45 we're coming out with two other 
uh, rafters that will come straight out at the overhang. And once again, using that two by six to know exactly where those will come into contact with the edge. The first thing we did different with the second floor roof is we are putting this blocking in before we're sheathing the roof just because there's no good way to get to it after the roof is sheathed. This blocking is 2x6 blocking that's screwed in to our eye joist and this will bear the weight of our gutter that way our gutter has something solid to be screwed into and hang off of. Even with that top, you can see the top, just make the top even. You can put a couple. Okay. Cool? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think that's what I would do. Huh? That's what I would do. Yeah, it's pretty right, right One cool thing that. about zip sheathing is it has squares and circles on the face of it every 12 inches, 16 inches, and 24 inches on center. And that way you can know exactly where you're nailing and if you're nailing into a stud when you're nailing in the field of the OSB. However, since we did our joist space 19.2 inches on center, we didn't have that luxury of being able to just nail in right where there's a square. So I used my level to line up on the edge of the joist. That way I knew I was hitting it with every nail. Once we were about halfway done with the roof, it was getting really hard to bring full 4x8 sheets up onto the roof. So we built a little stop so that we could put the rest of the sheets on the roof that we needed and we wouldn't have any more trouble getting them up. Also, because our joists are spaced 19.2 inches on center and not 16, we had to use these H clips, which are basically just sheathing clips. That way, the centers of the OSB in between the joists are supported. So we went through and taped the roof. We're going to go back through and use the liquid flash on all the nail holes like we did on that first roof, but we're just trying to get it waterproofed enough because we're going to get two days of rain this week. Also I know I mentioned the one thing we did different on this roof, but the second thing we did different on the second floor roof is there's no overhang to the west. We're going to have a lot of issues building that overhang just because that west wall isn't technically a load-bearing wall so we couldn't rest joists on it like we did for the east wall 
we were going to do a ladder frame and we tried that it was just too heavy for that joist and for even blocking in between the joist to handle so we didn't do that we're just making a no overhang which looking at it looks fine um it doesn't look bad at all it's just it is what it is You okay? That'll be a fun one to put in the video.